Hello and welcome to Gamerzine TV, the show that puts soul in your console, joy in your stick, then gets a migraine and has to have a lie down. Coming up... All pain and no gain, Marky Mark Wahlberg tells us why he decided to tackle Mad Max. Hopefully people think it's cool, I mean, you know. And at the launch of Tomb Raider Underworld, Lara Croft shows us the contents of her pouch. Dear Alison, marry me. <laughs> but before all that, it's over to Johnny for this week's top five, it's Pick of the Geek. Uh, gurning its way in at number five, it's Smackdown vs Raw 2009. While wrestling games can rarely be called groundbreaking, nobody can deny their good, mindless fun. This is a must for diehard fans. Shimmering at four is Mirror's Edge. A lot of you have been pointing out it's too short, but with the novelty of first-person free-running, we still think it's worth taking a leap of faith and getting yourself a shard of the action. Pummeling the crap out of your childhood favourites at three is Mortal Kombat vs DC Universe. Finish him. The beat-em-up mashup launches today, combining DC favourites like Superman and the Green Lantern with all the muscled, violent characters you know and love. Expect a full review as soon as we've unlocked a few more characters. Flouncing through the flora and capping all the fauna, Tomb Raider Underworld is in it too. Lara Croft is stretching her lovely legs on pretty much every format from today as she tries to get her hands on Thor's mighty weapon, Cheeky Minx. More Lara later. And blowing away the rest of the competition to become our game of the week, it's Call of Duty World at War. Putting a harder, grittier spin on the World War II format, Call of Duty has stormed onto shelves with a plethora of new enemies, tactics and of course weapons. Most exciting of all though is the introduction of online co-op play, meaning you and up to three mates can play through missions together, taking the tactical side of tanning hides to all new heights. I have started worrying that Nathaniel might be getting a bit too into it though. Thanks, Johnny. Now, as you 360 gamers will have noticed, Xbox Live has had a makeover this week. The new interface is much easier on the eye, allowing you to design your own dashboard and your own profile avatar. Speaking of being easy on the eye, the sugar babes, hardcore gamers that they are, managed to tear themselves away from GTA 4 just long enough to sing a few numbers at the launch. We caught up with them afterwards to find out just why they can't live without gaming. Really, really good game. Yeah. Really impressed. Keisha I just got to drag her off the one just a minute ago. Yeah. And then again. Next up, films adapted from video games don't have the strongest of track records. Super Mario Brothers, Hitman, Dead or Alive, Silent Hill, you name it, I've slept through it. So when I met Mark Wahlberg, the star of Max Payne, I asked him why on earth he chose this role. When I read the script, I thought it was a great story. It was a great character for me to play. I've been looking to do something uh, in the action world after doing some more serious dramas. And, you know, the character is just, you know, there's, it, it's multifaceted. You know, the guy's driven by emotion, so it's not just a sense to shoot him up. And, uh, you know, hopefully people think it's cool. I mean, you know, I don't know. I think Mar Super Mario Brothers is the only one I can kind of think of. But... Well, exactly. They get a bad rap. Yeah. But for those... But, and I don't care where the stories come from as long as they're good. You know, it's, it's, it's very hard in this day and age to find a good script. So. I wanted to get this tattoo. That's a Valkyrie. The Ratchet's dead. It's an amazing cast of people, especially the, the two leading ladies, mm -hmm. Mila Kunis and the uh, new Bond girl, obviously, Olga Kirilenko. But there are no sex scenes. How the hell did you manage that? Uh, well, you know, if Max was trying to, you know, figure out who murdered his wife and then took the time to stop and have sex with a couple of attractive women, that would have been pretty bad. Fair point at the end there, Mark, but the film does disappoint. There's still never been a really decent video game adaptation. Hollywood's answer? Well, make some more. Over to Ben Kingsley, future star of Prince of Persia, the movie. I'm doing Prince of Persia uh, at Pinewood Studios. I'm playing the wicked uncle, a villain, and it's gorgeous. And finally, Tomb Raider Underworld is out today, and when we got the invite to take tea with Lara to celebrate the release, well, we figured it'd be rude not to. Welcome to Croft Manor, Lara's third biggest asset and the home of the Tomb Raider. Yes, Lara Croft and her massive guns are back with the release of Tomb Raider Underworld. And with the new game comes a new live-action Lara. Step forward, Alison Carroll, international gymnast turned full-time Tomb Raider. Becoming Lara Croft is just the most amazing experience um, ever. I'm living the dream job, I tell you. 
Um, my diary is absolutely jam-packed with activity. Now I'm off to Australia, Singapore, Dubai, South Africa. So, you know, it's just the most amazing opportunity. She's obviously bending over to please the fans, but sometimes they must get a bit much. I actually got a little note, let me show you. Put it in here, my little pouch. From a, a fan in France saying, Dear Alison, marry me. <laughs> it's to the point. <laughs> Which was very sweet, very sweet. So I put it in my little pouch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it for this week, but we'll be back next time with Bells On. Literally, it's our Christmas special. Till then, check out the latest news and reviews at gamerzines.com.